up at Persimmon Grove uh, store up there. His name was Wheeler. Grandpa would walk about two and a half miles every day to that store. And then on the weekend, he would come back with a grocery order for these people that lived on 12 Mile Creek. And they were called Creek people. And they said, Frank, he said, instead of you hauling groceries down to us, why don't you start a store and we'll come to your store? So he said, I didn't have no money. Uh, he said, well, if you don't start one, somebody will. So he went back to Mr. Wheeler, who had the grocery store, and he told him what the people down here were talking about. He said, well, Frank, why don't you start a store? He said, I don't have no money to start a store. So in about a week or two, Mr. Wheeler said, well, Frank, I'll give you the money to start a store. So that's why Grandpa got a store started. It was a two-room or two-story log building here. Grandpa rented that building, lived upstairs, and had the store in there for uh, two or three years until his half-brother, Uncle Pete, said, we'll build you a new store. So the log store sat right in the corner, and they cut it in half with a cross-cut saw, had the store in there, and they built that part first. That was built. They took the groceries and stuff out and put them in there. Then Uncle Pete built the rest of this. So that's the way Grandpa got his store. So what he started, I got the book in there to show you, whenever uh, it was, what, the barter system. They never used, uh, handled no money for a whole month. You brought your chickens and eggs and butter and cash. Grandpa would take that to town and sell it and say he would get $20 for all of it. He would give you like $15 back, you know. And so he made his money on the produce and stuff that he took to town and gave you back part of it. But that... But then what you bought from Grandpa amounted to twenty-five, thirty dollars You only owed him $5, see? That was the barter system. So there really wasn't no taxes collected. You traded back and forth is what you did. And as time went by, there was always hardships. One year, maybe two years, there was a drought. It was dry. The farmers didn't raise much, you know, and Grandpa... Gave him credit until he didn't have no more money. And one time they said he was standing on the streets of Newport, Kentucky, and this ain't no fish story, to sell what he had and come back home empty with no, no produce or nothing, you know. Back then they said, a guy was there and said, well, what's wrong, Frank? And he told him. And the guy says, here, here's $300.00. You go buy what you need to buy, go back home. And they said, and he came back home, things got better, and everybody else then got a little money together and went on. So things like that happened. Grandpa had then in 1930, that would have been uh, 50 years. He had a celebration here. I got pictures of that, you know, and well, I guess Grandpa was about 80 some years old back then, you know. So he lived from 1930 to 1940. Nine o'clock in the morning, he got sick. I guess he was in a store at six when he started the store. I guess September 13th of 1880, and I'd say he started at four o'clock in the morning because four o'clock is when he'd left here and went to Newport, and it took him till four o'clock that evening to get to Newport, 12 hours. So, in 1940, at 9 o'clock, he got sick, and my dad and who else was in here? My uncle took him up to the house. He lived till 12 o'clock that afternoon, and that was in the grandpa. He had a bad stroke. His uh, one good friend, Dr. Zinn from Alexander, came up, and I forget what he said, that dad, he had stomach trouble or something like that, you know. That was it. So, from then on, it was my dad, Frank, and my Uncle Dominic, them two B's old. Uncle Dominic was a truck driver, and Dad stayed in the store. And so them two had it 
Oh, I guess it was about 20 years. And then Uncle Dom, he retired. Dad had it for like 20 years. And I had it for 19 years. And I closed it up in uh, April of 81. It was there for a hundred years, I think in about six months. Dad said when it was 80 years old, he said, you'll keep it till it's about a hundred years and you'll close it down. And, well, I kept it for a hundred years and six months. In April, in IGA, in Alexander, they opened up in May. So that was the end of the mom and pop grocery store. You couldn't compete with a bigger store because you can only buy a case of one thing where that grocery store would buy a whole truckload. See? And so then they would get it cheaper, you know. And then they could sell it cheaper than you could, you know. So that was the end. Here in Campbell County, in Southern Campbell County, I think I could count at least 13 stores that was just like that. The same store that Grandpa clerked in closed up. I think it was just about a month or two before I did. See, and then Grand Slick store closed up. In Peach Grove, that's Fountain County, they closed up. And there was a store in Manor closed up. One, did I say Carthage? I think I did. Closed up. And down in Ross, Kentucky. So they, there was at least 13 stores, little stores that closed down. Because a store like this is not big enough, you know, to keep everything, see. And I tried to run it like Grandpa, which I shouldn't have. A guy told me, you ought to just have potato chips, pretzels, and stuff like that. I tried to have hardware, dry goods, and all that stuff that Grandpa had, you know, see. But it, it, it just didn't work, you know. Of course, you could have a little carryout, you know, it might work, but I'm too old for that. They, they're not very bright, but Nanny could open up the door, but then they said that I could. That's as much as I can do. Maybe that'll help a little bit more. No, that, that's good. Wow. Look at this. This is the original. Well, it's, uh, he built this in 1895 is when he built this. The house he built in 1885. So he had a store here in 1880, but not the same building. Now, are those some leftover things from the store? No, now anything you see on the shelves, oh, well, some stuff is. Them white things was part of a lamp that slid down over a lamp. That was part that Grandpa sold there. You know, these here, two right here, was flu stops. When you would take this flu down, you would put a stop up there so the birds couldn't get in. See? Well, naturally, he sold Mother's Oats toward the end. I just stuck them up there. But that, that, and then the cups, no. You know, there's a sign that Grandpa had standard oil products in 1912. Is when he had the first oil products. The other one, that's the picture of me when I was in Camp Pendleton, California. I'm about the, ah, uh, the second crease on the left. There, you know, that there white streak going up and down, they called Old Smoky. If you goofed up, you carried a cross. Up that, and then there's a mountain above that. Then if you goofed up, another guy did, you walked up there and brought the cross back down. Oh, I don't know anything else I could see at Grant Walls. Over on that side there, well, I don't know what you can turn around. Uh, on that side is where Grandpa had all the bolts of dry goods. You know, all the different colors and stuff, blue denim. They made their own overhauls and stuff years ago. See? There wasn't. Some of the calendars tell, told me what he did have. 
he, he hauled the produce to town for you, you know, and sold it for $10 and he gave you $9, you know, or something like that. It shows you in the book. I got the first book, the first customer Grandpa had, you know, in 1880. It was a pro sorry. I'm going to have to shut this door. I'm going to count the beast up yet. You can say some of the mason jars, they might not be the same one. Grandpa sold them in the store. These right here, these are shoes that he sold in the store back way back when. And you don't see shoes, men, men's shoes, curved like that. You know, and this here star brand shoes from St. Louis. And they got a leather, leather sole is what they got. They got a star on the heel. It's a hard rubber. And if it didn't satisfy you, he, the owner of Robert Johnson and Rand would give you another shoe just like this plus $5. Yeah. Now you, that, that's a bargain. This pair of shoes at one time sold for $3.90. DAX was Grandpa's code name and D-A-X-G-O-D, that cost Grandpa three dollars, is what it cost him. That D means God, G-O-D was three. In God we trust. See, but it didn't sell and then they lowered it down to 75 cents. You know, see, and, and they lost money on it, but that's the way it goes. See, uh, well, and then this is the red ball overshoes that they sold here. See, it's got a red ball on it, you know, for 60 years. They was in business. Well, that, that was me. I shouldn't say that. that. And then see, here it was called Frank B's Old Sons, California, Kentucky. That was after Grandpa died. There was two sons, Frank and Dominic. And then after that, it was just Frank. And then after that... It, uh, it was just me. I mean, you don't see this anymore. Winchester shells came in a box like that. I mean, that's dovetail. You know, I guess they thought they would blow up or something. I don't know. And this here, they don't have that anymore. Nail cakes, they all come in pound packages. And that's a Clark spool case. You know, oh, what? I don't know what, what the name was. O N T, what that meant, but uh, that's where Grandpa kept a spool, a thread. Uh, Clark was one, Coates and Clark, that's right, but I don't know what the O N T meant, but I thought there was some stuff in there. I must have cleaned it all out. See, there's where they kept all the thread. See, in that little thing there. Let's see. S O L E soul soul agent. I don't know. It means something. Uh, but this that's this is the oldest one. See, this is a quartz O N T, and see they kept threading that. See, they had the numbers. And, what's it? Not come back in. I thought we should leave that go. But this is a revolving spool. Okay, see, there's a round high design there. And you open it up, and there it was your thread there. You know, and it was all one size up and down through there. Like that, and then you drop that in on the top up here. You know, it just went down through there. And then, see, there's little spots all the way through. Sort of reminds you of b box. You know, they sold a lot of different stuff there. Now, here, here was a chair. This is... This is the highlight of the store, I guess. Uh, there was more fish stories told on this chair than there was in any other chair. Uh, people stood in the pocket eye. They went holes in the chair. This one here, this was wore out and then putting their feet up on it. You know, I would say this was the first chair Grandpa had. This chair came from Clarionville, Kentucky, from a store over there that I bought a few odds and ends from, you know. This Streetman Biscuit Company, that's no longer, 
of strict purity. It's Keebler, called Keebler now. Straitman bought out Keebler. Keebler is from Elmhurst, Illinois now. That's what it records with. I don't know how, I can't understand this. Grandpa's, that's got cinnamon marked on it. And, and uh, it's supposed to turn something, I think. But he couldn't have two different things in one. So I guess he had all cinnamon. And here's what they, he must have sold a lot, was gunpowder. See, because they had muzzle loaders in them days, and they shot a lot of rabbits and stuff like that. And I can't, never could understand what the heck that meant. We try to figure it out. It's O O L O N G something. I don't know what it is. But see the pictures that they got on it. It's all dark, and that sort of a homemade job is what that. Was. And yeah, that, these here. Uh, <laughs> well, what's he say? That was about Manor, Carthage, and everything. He, what one are you looking at? you want to look at the books or you want to look at something like this? This is Kate Smith and that there is Matt Schmidt. That was Grandpa's uh, sister-in-law, brother-in-law. That was a house that was across the road over there. Well, and that was a house that was over there. They said this guy here, um, Nortger, was so poor when he came from the old country he lived in a cave up in Ohio, and he had Nortker chipped in a cave up in Ohio. That's my dad. That's an old bachelor Kohler. And that's one of my uncles there. And that's my grandpa there. And that's my uncle Tony. And that's grandpa's half brother. His uh, his mother husband died of the cholera epidemic in Cincinnati, and then she moved back out home. You know, with her sister. And, well, that Wahlberger hook, that's Grandpa's mother-in-law. Grandpa's brother-in-law and Grandpa's, uh, this guy's father. Right there, and there he is again with all his kids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. His, that's in Latonia, Kentucky right now. And that's Grandpa's uh, wife right there, Victoria. And that's one of Victoria's sisters there. There was at least three. And well, that there is Grandpa and his wife and all of Grandpa's boys. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. And two daughters, eight. That's my dad, <laughs> First World War. That's my dad going to Louis down at Louisville, I guess, or going to Louisville in the First World War. Uh, that's a bunch of school kids. Down St. Peter and Paul, but I only know one there, one there, there's that one there, and that one there look the same. The Kellers is what their name is. You don't want to look through this whole thing, do you? Oh, well, let me just show you a few. That's a picnic ground out there, and that's a family. That's when Grandpa had his uh, 50th reunion. Right there is where he's at. That's his kids again. And that match mitt, that's his uh, blacksmith shop in Alexander. I wanted to show you one. They said these people got me. And she had a baby the next day. <laughs> and that's a picnic ground up in Wesley Chapel Church. Said so they used to fix the dance floor, saw it out down at the mill at Alexander, or Gupture's Mill, and uh, then they'd sell the lumber the next day, or the same day. They never had no electric. Oh, that's the same picture, that guy there. And these, all these guys got hats on. There used to be a hat store up there, and they bought the hat store. And that's that Fisher Road you were standing on. Out there, yeah. That's been, that's a big log we got ahead. That's the same picture, and that's that picnic. And uh, they, they took a lot of pictures here. My uncle, one of them, he was a photographer. That's why I got a lot of pictures. Grandpa's first truck he had after that. One of my uncles, he got burnt in Cincinnati. They brought him home. 
That's a bunch of school kids. See, they had to carry school buckets. That's our first school buses we had. The buggy went to Craig. Oh, what the heck is that picture? I think it's the last picture. With great Grandpa Beasel. That's Grandpa Beasel. Grandpa Beasel and his wife again. Grandpa Beasel and his daughters, or granddaughters. That guy took off and went to Canada because the girl before him wrote him with dear John Butter. And he took off. Outdoor barbershop. You never see that in anyone. Hey there. That's my mother. That was a flood, you know. Came through here about six inches. There. That's a that's my great grandpa that came from Alsace Lorraine and his brother. And his brother went to Dayton, Ohio, and he was down he could have Saint uh, what the heck is that church down there in Washington Street? Uh anyhow he could have had ground there, but he moved out here. Oh, that's four of my uncles. That's my dad and my uncle that were with the truck and I think that's about all that you want to see. So we can look at you want to look at the oldest book or the youngest book? Oh, let me go down here. Maybe you can't take a picture of it. Going through here. That's roosting right up there. I guess I ain't helping it any by showing this to people. Just don't pick it up. He is Frank Brossart. Uh, Frank Brossart is the first customer he had, and it was September 13th. Uh, 1880, don't say it on there, and he bought sugar, two pounds of sugar, at 11 cents a pound, 22 cents. And then the next one says matches a nickel and tax a nickel. That all amounted to 32 cents. See, the next day, or no, the same day, he bought a amount of 22 cents. So three and two is five, and two and two is four. 54 cents. That's what he bought. But then you see over here, 22 cents uh, buy. That meant he bought, B-O-U-G-A. He said buy 24, 2.14 dozen eggs, I believe, for 22 cents. And he put that in a different column, and then when he, he added it up down here, see, and here's something six cents. See, I should get a page that you could see more. No, it's good. That's good? It's okay. Good. See, I mean, it's in bad shape, but I should get it fixed up. So then, yeah, that guy said, Frank, you take the $300, and Grandpa paid him back in a couple of years. You know? And see, some of these you can see better. He had where he paid Wahlberger's funeral in there. The funeral only cost like, well, digging a grave cost three dollars. A grave cost five dollars, and uh, the funeral alone cost, I believe, about twenty dollars. You know, and Grandpa paid for all of it because they didn't have that much money, I guess. Then, but then she paid. Uh, that was for her husband, and Wahlberger paid him off later on, see. Grandpa more or less was like the bank, I guess. You know, I don't think maybe he left out a loan, I don't know. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Yeah, uh, telling some stories about my one Uncle Henry, right there where that stove, that stove wasn't there. Grandpa would go up to the house at 6 o'clock in the evening and the young guys would stay around here and they'd play cards. 
And Uncle Henry said the next morning his mother would have to come down and sweep up the peanut shells around the stove. They'd be six inches deep, he said. That was kind of a fish story, wasn't it? <laughs> I heard him say that many a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, this, this one looks a lot better, but, you know, Kate Beasel, that, that Kate, and that Kate Beasel, what's in there, that little lady, see? But if you'd look back here, it wouldn't say Kate, it would say her husband. Uh, because he died when he was 28 years old. And say John, I think his name was John. Joe, Joe. And uh, so he died. And so she took the reins of keeping the house. They had two kids. You know, and Grandpa held her. Uh, he, he gave her a job for cleaning the house because Grandma had to stay here in the store. You know, and he paid her $3.20 $3 a day. That was a lot of money back, you know. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of you, you talked about this guy I think didn't you mm, yes